All right, what is up everybody? It's your boy Rebel back with another workflow tutorial and today we are going to talk about upscaling. So this workflow that I've created can work for both video and image upscaling. Granted the video section we'll talk about later is less than viable for low RAM users. Um, that being said, you technically can run this setup without any errors on low VRAM, even with the video, but it is going to take hours depending on how many frames you're trying to upscale. So today we're just going to talk about the image section of this. It's pretty straightforward on how you would use the video section. You just unbypass these nodes and bypass the image and saved image nodes and you can utilize this section. You also need to switch the latent from one to two. One is your image, two is your video. It's actually labeled right here. It's also in the information right here. You're gonna need a couple files first off. Um, if you don't have these custom nodes that are installed in here, then you're gonna need to update your custom nodes or install the missing ones. Make sure that you're up to date. <clears throat> and then you're going to download the files in the links in the description that I've provided and put them in the correct folders that they're labeled in. So you don't need to download this specific model from any website. You can just go to your Comfy UI manager, go to your model manager, and you can just type in real and you will come to this. So this is a 2x upscaler this is a 4x i choose the 4x just because it's a bigger image it's upscaling it by four times so you're going to get a lot more pixels and clarity when it's compressed back down onto people's phones so i would just click this and install that and then you can pull the model after you restart your comfort ui the rest of your models will be downloaded from the websites in the description um, after that we can get started so you're gonna start with this basic setup. This is actually just pretty much a straightforward upscale workflow. There's nothing really different about it. Um, so what you're gonna do is you will start by uploading a start image that you want to be upscaled. You don't necessarily need a prompt unless you're trying to be specific and change something. Like if you want her to wear glasses, or if you know you know you wanted her to be carrying something whatever you can put that into the prompt you can also use the negative prompt to help you know curate what you don't want um, after you input your image you're going to so here's the thing right I have two different upscale models here this one is your 4x real Essergen. I don't know how to say this exactly, but this is like your standard upscale model. This one here is a realistic rescaler. This one works with pixelation really well and it helps define new details that you wouldn't necessarily see in the pixelation. It just helps refine it like a lot better. This is a standard upscaler. So this is gonna make your image more pixels and keep the detail retained. This will increase detail and add detail that is missing. Uh, this is a LoRa for mid-journey in Flux because this is a Flux um, upscaler. I'm actually using the SRPO model, but um, this adds just a different aesthetic and adds different detail to whatever you're trying to generate, so that's up to you whether or not you want to use it. Um, that's why I have it uh, bypassed. So I would say for the most part the K sampler you're gonna want to run 20 to 30 steps and I would say the CFG could be anywhere from 3 to 8 depending on how much adherence you want to your image. Your CFG controls how much you adhere to the prompt or how much you adhere to the original uh, reference point I guess you would say. For your denoise, this is going to depend on how much you want the initial image to retain. Same kind of thing with the CFG, but the CFG follows prompt adherence more. So just keep that in mind. You can tweak all three of these settings and get a different output on the same seed. 
So this node here is your interpolation node. Um, what it essentially does is it doubles or triples the frame rate based on what you pick the multiplier to be. Um, essentially what you do with this is you feed your images from your video into this node. It will double all of the frames and then put them into the combine node. And what you can do like post generation is you can take your video file from this and and you can put it into a video editor like CapCut and you can just uh, speed up the video by two times. So like double the speed of the video and it will be twice as smooth as the original video was. So just keep that in mind. This node should be on bypass by default if you're not using the video workflow section. If you're only doing images, you need to keep this bypassed. So really quickly, I just want to talk about this video section of the upscaler. Um, the reason that I call this a low VRAM upscaler is because of this section right here. Now, this is a meta batch manager. So what this does is instead of feeding every frame into the upscaler and overloading your memory, you can batch each frame one by one through the upscaler and bring them into a combined node to finish into a video again. So essentially you're taking the video, breaking it down frame by frame, putting it in one by one into the meta batch and running it back into a video using this video info node, which carries the FPS back over. So I actually have some reference settings right here to let you know about how long this would be. And so one upscaled image on my RTX 3070 with eight gigs of VRAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM takes about 10 minutes. So a video with 81 frames would take hours being that 10 minutes per frame, 81 frames, 810 minutes equaling 13 hours. That's a long time. So up to you, you know, whether or not you want to use this side of it. I'm sure if you just started it and left it overnight that you would have a video when you got back up. So, you know, I mean, that's always an option, but it is here in case you want to try it. So let's take a look at the examples of how this upscaler actually does, because the SRPO is a little bit different than the regular flux. It tends to work more on facial details and like detail refinement. Flux, Flux just like especially the dev model tends to like have very vibrant outputs no matter what you do, especially like this cyberpunk aesthetic. Um, but I do honestly at this point prefer the RSPO model. So you can make your own assumptions on how you feel about it. Here's another example. Here is the Flux Dev. This is the RSPO. Again, like outline seems to be more prominent than on the RSPO with the Dev. But again, this feels more realistic. There's more realism behind this. This feels like this was actually shot. This feels like a generation, if that makes sense. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you today. Um, pretty short and sweet. Just wanted to get this workflow out and let people get upscaling their images because I don't really see too many people talking about upscaling anymore. And now that we have new models to work with, it's always nice to experiment. If you guys like this comparison workflow, I've actually linked it in the description for you as well so you can try this out for yourself. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed what you saw, leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to tell me how the model is working for you. All right, guys, thank you. Have a good day.